Good morning guys, welcome to another video. As you can see, I'm next to a gravel pit. This is Manor Farm. I'm in swim eight, again on the linear complex. I've come here because, well firstly, it was free. Fairly short notice session. I've, uh, I've squeezed in between two bookings. For those of you who don't know, you book this on the Catch app. You have to book on in advance. You can't just turn up. Some of the lakes at, here at Linear, you have to book in advance. Some you can just turn up and fish. But I've managed to squeeze in be, uh, 24 hour session between two bookings. Now, I've come to this swim as well because I know exactly where to fish. I know the spots. We had a fantastic hit of fish here, didn't we? Uh, probably best part of a month ago now. I'll stick a link up there. You can go and have a look at that should you wish and I'll link in the description as well. We also fished here a few weeks ago and we've liked it. So, <laughs> nothing is a given at all. It's very moody water. They may be on, they may not. As you can see, it's very sunny. It's relatively warm, although there's a bitey easterly blowing, but that does mean it's blowing across into this corner here, which obviously bodes well. I've not seen anything yet, but being that I know the spots, I can get the rods out. We'll get fishing first off, and then uh, I'll run you through the gear, bait, etc., etc. So guys, I forgot to mention, we're actually primarily tench fishing today. <laughs> we may fish for the carp at night, but uh, definitely the idea is to catch some tench. Now, as I said, I've got some spots in mind out here. I'm gonna have a quick lead out, just make sure they're still there before we, uh, before we do anything else. Yeah, the spot there. Very close in, it's only seven wraps that spot. That's just donked down, lovely. But hopefully with this wind blowing, it's more of a cross wind to be fair. Yeah, and that's cracked down as well. We've got a lovely spot there. As I say, not very far out. Have one more cast, just in the middle. Yeah. Right, that spot's there. Now the other one, as far as I remember, was across that way towards the shop and was about nine wraps, but I'll just check on my phone. I made a note on my phone last time. I'll wrap this up. Right, eight and a half wraps across towards the shop. I've got a note, but I've gone nine purely because I've got to stand a bit further back. That's clear as well really don't want to make too much disturbance that was kind of the whole point of coming in here the water's up quite a lot so i'm going to stick an extra half wrap on because when i recorded these distances i was stood down there it's worth checking these spots obviously it's been a few weeks very warm weather so could well be that a lot of weeds grown up on the spots but i feel like they're still there I don't want to make too much disturbance, I'll say, really. Yeah. I'm not messing about anymore. That's enough interrogation of the of the spots. I say we've done it before, we know we know the situation. Just wanted to double check there wasn't any weed and it's grown up a little bit, but it's nothing we can't cope with. Right. Let's get the rods fishing. Oh, I forgot how tight the swim was to cast in. Just about hit the clip there, and that's gone down nice actually. I've not put any bait out yet. I've done so well recently. I'm not putting any bait out on the spots. I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to just yet. <laughs> it's uh, it's one of those things that the fish are almost cautious over it. It, it seems to me a, a bed of bait. I think I'm going to have to put some out, but uh, it's very tempting to just put the maggots out through the maggot feeder. But I think we'll perhaps we do, we'll put a little bit out, maybe three or four spawns, just to get a little bit of smell in that area. We're going to fish two rods. I'm going to fish one rod across here, one rod over here, seven wraps, just on maggot feeder. I'm going to put no bait in at all, apart from the maggots that go out through the feeder. We've got a spot over here that's big enough for two rods. I could actually squeeze two rods on there if, if it starts producing. 
We've got a spot over here big enough for two rods, 10 wraps. I'm going to put a little bit of bait, I think three or four spawns over there of tiny little pellets. Um, I'll show you that as, as and when I'll do it. To, to get this uh, get this rod sorted. As I say, with this with this lake, it's it's very hot and cold. <laughs> the fish might be really on it. They might not be on it at all. We could easily blank, or we could easily have catch of a of a, of a lifetime, really. Right, let's get another rod out. We got rod the one over. Now I think we'll get two on this spot first, and then we'll uh, then we'll have a look at the gear. So guys, just so I'm about to put some bait out, the wind picks up massively. So we'll, uh, we'll hang on a second. We'll just go through what I'm going to do, what I'm going to use. What I've got here is some pellets, very, very small pellets. There's some sticky baits, bloodworm pellets, manila, and the krill pellets in there. And there's also going to be some hemp shortly. I'm going to stick some hemp in here as well. There's a little bit of krill active uh, I want to call it ground bait, but it's not exactly ground bait. I suppose it's kind of kind of a ground bait. It's a bit sort of fizzy and up and down, just to get a bit of <clears throat> a bit of attraction in the area. That's the idea. I'm going to spot or spawn a few of these out, perhaps four or five, something like that. I normally go in with ten, but I think we'll 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 take it easy today, given that previous sessions I've done well on unbaited spots we'll just put a few out maybe only three but uh, I'm going to wait till this wind dies off a bit and what I'm going to use is a is a spawn for those of you not au fait with this sort of thing um, it's basically a bait delivery system you fill it up in there close it cast it out casts very nicely because of the shape and as that red button hits the water it pops open and all your bait comes out very clever very clever things you can get various sizes one of the uh, stipulations in the linear rules that i see lots of people not adhering to but one of the rules is you have to have a spawn float on because these things can often sink and uh, linear require you to have a spawn float on so that it will stay floating should you crack off and then it will drift to the edge and someone will find it and say lucky day i've actually found two i found this one actually <laughs> here i've actually found two i've only ever bought one a uh, smaller one i found two big ones as soon as this wind dies off a little bit i'm going to get this out we use a spod rod it's about four and a half pound test curve rod big reel uh, and braided line as well which uh, obviously is low diameter so it flies out much nicer but we're only going 10 wraps anyway right at least we're fishing got a couple of rods in we'll get a little bit of bait on that spot as I say then we'll run through the gear and exactly what I'm doing right we'll get the hemp out and we'll, uh, we'll get it mixed in just got some uh, frozen hemp here ready cooked frozen hemp I just like to mix it in just before I spot out just purely because obviously I need to keep this frozen as I say I'm not going to use too much of this so I'm only going to mix it into sort of the top layer and we'll 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 take it very carefully very easily on the bait I think not a particularly fishy day today with uh, this bright sun out but you know with this, this place <laughs> I caught a few weeks ago and caught some cracking fish in this weather some big carp and decent tench so you never quite know with this place when it's on it's on right it's eased off a little bit it's a very awkward wind because it's sort of coming from that direction so when you punch it out sometimes it really drags off and other times it just sails through uh, Cops just come out right in the middle. Just hold oh, that was a huge tent. Bit of a porpoise sort of type roll. No, I'll put my finger stall on. If you've seen any of the previous videos down here at Linear, you might have seen me with this finger stall on. It's just a neoprene finger, effectively. You can get them that wrap around your wrist as well, but I find this is fine. I've got big fat fingers, so it stays on. But um, it's just a good idea when you're casting this braided line you're giving it a bit of a wang decent heavy weight you're giving it a bit of a wang with uh, with a powerful rod you don't want the braid cutting your finger right I'm 
punched that one. It bounced back a bit, which is not ideal, but I think we'll just put three or four of these in. Perhaps four. I'm not going to go mad just yet, as I say. I want to make it look like a dangerous area. We'll just get some smell in. We can also put more in. Can't take it out, as I say. That's better. A second to empty. Now, to go through the gear, um, one of the rods I've got is my Dower Infinity Evo Barbell Pound and Three Quarter Test Curve 12 foot rod. Got a GSBR LT3000 reel on there. Do like a small reel, I have to say. The other two rods I've got, my Free Spirit Barbell Tamers, they're two and a quarter pound test curve rods. Sounds probably a little bit heavy for tension, but they are very, very soft, they're very through action. So they're lovely for, for playing tension. I've also got my carp rods with me, uh, my Sonic Vader Xs. I'll put all the details of um, all this gear down below in the description, not over there, down there. <laughs> down below in the description, so you can go and have a look at your leisure. Terminal tackle wise, what I'm using, are these dark matter corda dark matter leaders they're like a big thick fluorocarbon that's the best way i can describe them i like the helicopter version as you can see here now what i'm going to use on the end which i haven't grabbed i change out the clip on the end and i put a nice clip on that i that i like to use they're just fused loops in the end so it's easy to change stuff and what i like to put on the end is is a feeder now on the two left hand rods as there's a bit of bait over there i'm using these Drennan, uh, I think they're called feeder bombs. They fly lovely through the wind, which is exactly what we need today. But on the right hand spot, I'm not going to bait at all apart from through the feeder. I'm using these Corum Combi feeders, sort of medium size. They get a bit more in them than these. So uh, I can get a bit of bait out there a bit quicker. So I'm going to use that on this rod. I'll stick that in the clip at the bottom. What I have found with these though, um, if you've not seen these before, obviously you can fish these as a, a block end feeder, but you can also take the ends off. Both ends come off. They, there's a bit of power gun between them and you can fish them as an open end feeder. However, what I've found is that when I'm playing decent tension, carp and stuff on this gear, the ends get knocked off. They fall off in the lake and you've lost the ends. So because I'm only using these as block end feeders, I've actually super glued this bottom one, <laughs> this bottom one in. Took a bit of doing, I had to wash them off. It's quite quite an oily sort of plastic. I had to give them a good wash first to get the super glue to take, but I've super, super glued the bottom end in so I can maggot feed it up and hopefully we won't lose the ends because they're about quid 50 for a pair of ends. But uh, you know, that's not the main thing. The problem is if you catch a few fish and lose all your ends, can't use these anymore. So onto the actual hook link itself, which I've not got on there at the moment I'll just grab one a bit ill prepared for this wasn't I what you've got there as you can see is a quick change swivel again I've changed this out it comes with a standard swivel on there I like a quick change one so it's nice and easy to change what I'm going to do is got a tiny little hook link here I'll get this on and I'll show you what I do there is just put that hook link onto that quick change swivel there very short hook link maybe three four inches long something like that it's uh, drennan suplex fluorocarbon the size 10 or 12 10 i think uh drennan wide gape on the, on the business end there i put three maggots on that obviously maggots in the feeder and we're away the only thing to be careful of with this when you set this up there's a bottom bead on there what you want to do is make sure that is high enough that you hook isn't going to interfere with your swim feeder there isn't going to get tangled up there's a bead above it as well it's one of these no trace beads you slide that down and, and be as tight or as loose as you want i leave generally when it's weed free i leave two or three inches between if it's weedy i'd slide that right up so this hook link can slide up and sit above the weed but that no trace bead it's a bead with a slot in it probably see that there it sits on a bit of rubber this hook link will knock that bead off should a crack off or something and the fish picks the bait up 
that swivel will knock that bead off, off that bit of rubber, the bead will fall off, the hook link will come off the line where it's broken and the fish won't be tethered to a feeder and a load of main line. That's the idea. I'll, again, I'll put all the information on all this down below, breaking strains, etc. of line. Diameters, more importantly, really. Right, time to get this out, I think. Now, if you watch any of the previous videos, and of course this one, um, you've probably heard me talking about wraps. A wrap, basically, is a rod length. And it's generally accepted that a rod length is 12 foot in this instance. Now, these days, people refer to it as wraps rather than rod lengths, as we used to call it, um, because you wrap up around sticks. As you can probably see, there's two sticks in the ground here. I've set them apart. 12 foot. There are only a couple of very cheap, proper wrapping sticks, but in the past, I've used bank sticks. You can use anything, really to wrap up around. And what we're gonna do is wrap the line around them until we get to the right distance that we, we found with the, uh, the marker rod, with the spod rod. So what I'm gonna do is put the feeder next to that one. I'm gonna feather the line as I take it out so that we don't have any slack line out. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, Five, six, got a clip in here already. <laughs> Seven, I'm gonna stick half a wrap on because I'm standing a bit further back to cast because of the water level. And then what I'm gonna do is seven and a half wraps, I'm gonna stick that in the clip like so. Wind this back on. Again, I'm just running it through my fingers as you can see, put up, up the rod to stop it. Um, you know, to keep a bit of tension on the line. Stop getting any tangles or any loops or anything. And there we go. We have our seven wraps clipped up on there. It's very easy, it's just a case then of repeating that every time you cast out. You can pick the rod up and clip up, obviously, but you don't want to be leaving the clip on with the rod out in the water because if you have a cart pick this up and even a big tench and they scream off with it, you're going to lose your rod. So always unclip when the rod's in the water and then either clip it up before you wind in, which I always forget to do, or re-wrap up before you cast out. And that is how you get it onto the same spot every single time. Right, let's get this one in the drink. Now it may take a bit of time to get this right-hand spot going as we're only feeding it with the bait from the feeder. That's gone down with a lovely donk, that has. Glad we put that extra half wrap on. I'm just putting that extra on because, as I say, last time when I marked up, up these distances, I was stood down there. We're probably four or five foot, perhaps five foot back from there now, which is getting on for half a wrap. Right, bait runs on. Fingers crossed. And we'll recast these rods very regularly for now perhaps every 20 minutes half an hour i've got um four or five pints of maggots with me so we can get plenty of maggots out there bait wise really i'm i'm relying on maggots i've got various sort of little pop-ups and little boilies and stuff we could use and perhaps we'll put that on one rod to try and single out a bigger tench perhaps if we're struggling but i've found maggots an absolutely fantastic bait I think when we're fishing tonight, we'll probably put the carp rods out, I would think. Because I don't think fishing maggots at night is gonna be a particularly clever trick. I don't think we're gonna to do too well. We'll perhaps put some solid bags out on the, on the spots we're fishing, or even if we see some fish, perhaps cast a fish. But I think tench fishing will probably, best time will probably be as it starts to get dark and first thing in the morning. We've gotta be off by nine, but it gets light about four, doesn't it? So we've got five hours in the morning to have a good crack at it. As I say, you know, we know, we might catch some carp in the night as well and some clonkers in here. They go over 40 pound, don't they, in here? I believe, I think there might be even be a 50 in there. That's a couple of catfish as well, I think. <laughs> That'd be fun. I did actually, once, when I was here last, last close season, I actually bloke caught a catfish in this swim. <laughs> in the middle of the night. Right. I say, time for a bit of a sort out. Get the sun cream on. 
get the maggots back in the cool box and uh, we'll get the house up. I'll put a big net up as well just in case we do get a carp. And uh, fingers crossed, one of the rods will tear off, but I'm going to work them, like I say. At least every half an hour we're going to cast. Perhaps every 20 minutes or certainly every time I think about it. <laughs> right, you watch the rods, I'm going to sort out. Quick update, it's, uh, it's about four o'clock now. Getting on four, back quarter to four. Nothing's happened at all on the on the rods. I've not seen anything either, but middle of the day, sunny day, I'm not really surprised. It's not the easiest fish spotting conditions either in this chop. Wind has eased a little bit, it's swung around a little bit as well. It's giving a little bit more directly towards us. There's the odd cop jumping out in the bay next door just around this corner here so as the tent fishing is fairly quiet at the moment what I'm going to do is take one of the alarms and go just the other side of this tree which you can see here <laughs> just over there there's a tree I'll show you in a second where these carp have been boshing out and it's it's happening too much to ignore to be honest and the fact that we're not getting anything on the tench front also a bit too much to resist really so I'm going to stick just one rod out there I've got one rod on each spot still I'm just going to stick this just around the other side of this tree we're going to cast a, a PVA solid PVA bag over to that tree over there where these carp have been jumping out we'll most probably disturb them by getting the bait over there but um, at least it's got to be worth a go and given that there's nothing going on these rods and there's clearly some fish over there I think it's worth chucking a rod over there for an hour or so and uh, just seeing if we can we can pick up a bonus carp so guys we're just around the corner from the swim and they're jumping out next to that tree over there that you can see just sticking out five or six times now just see so like I say we can winkle out a, a carp we're only about three or four meters from the main rods the tench rods now I have no idea what's on the bottom down there. But uh, we're gonna have to chance it, I think. I'm not gonna be able to have a cast in and a feel around or anything, it's gonna spook the fish, they'll be gone. You get one go. Ideally, I'd like to not be casting really, but I haven't got any choice. Got a little PVA bag there with just some Pacific tuna bag mix in it. And a tiny little whittle down, boily, just that's the same color as the bag mix, just so it doesn't stand out as a sort of scary thing. Right, as I say, I reckon we get one go at this. If I mess it up, I think that'll be that, certainly for the foreseeable future. It's really tight in here as well. I'm not sure how I'm gonna cast. Bit of a punch, maybe. Well, that's close enough. Went down with a little bit of a donk as well. Would have been nice to have it a couple of foot closer, but we can live with that. And get the rod nice and high. So it's over these reeds. I'm gonna lock that up. I'm gonna lock that up so that uh, fish can't run into that snag I don't think they will right the alarm set very sensitively as well so if a carp so much as sneezes anywhere near that we should get an indication of bringing the big net round as well you know be able to play it from here we can wade out if we need to if it goes around there if it goes around this way Around here, obviously we've got somewhere to stand in here and play it and land it in here, so it's all nice and safe. I would imagine that we've probably scared off those fish, but I did get a bit of a donk down, so we know that we can cast back there again. Well, carp's just launched out <laughs> just a little bit round from the tree, so they're clearly still there, so that's a good sign. Blimey, carp's washing out over there. Not far from that bag, certainly some fish around there. 
reckon I'm picking up a bonus cart on that rod. In the absence of anything else happening, anyway. <laughs> Nothing's going on at the moment. Dusk and dawn probably our best times for the tench. Tempted to keep a rod round there, to be honest, tonight. Because there's certainly some carp in there. We're going to do a bit of carp fishing tonight. It's probably a good idea to keep the carp rods out tonight. I'm not going to keep the maggot rods out. I'll just put some solid bags on the spots. We'll uh, we'll keep tench fishing certainly till it starts to get dark anyway, or certainly till it, till it's almost dark. Do you want to catch a nice big tench? Be uh, be great to do that before the river season opens. Oh, right, bunged up. Just had to take a hay fever tablet. I'm uh, struggling a bit. It certainly works. It's bunged me up. <laughs> Right, that's the rods refreshed. I say I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what to do with this third rod. I think I'm going to put the uh, put the carp rods out at night. If we do catch some tench on the carp rods, then that's a little bit unfortunate. But uh, I think I'm better off with the carp rods out at night. Certainly not going to fish, not going to fish uh, maggots during the night. We'll get on some little tiny boilies. I may well keep one rod out with a very, very tiny little boilie on, a little eight mil. I may keep one rod out on that main spot and then put another spot, another rod, carp rod on that spot and another one perhaps to the to the right hand spot. That's my thinking at the moment anyway, but uh, there's really not a lot happening. Not, as I say, not really the best day for fishing, but had a good result here in similar conditions a month or so ago so you know it's not beyond, beyond the realms of possibility that I'd have had some bites today but not had a single knock off a fish we had that one pick up off that grebe but occasionally in here perhaps two or three times a session you'll get a little drop back which is often some there's some, lots of little perch in here about this sort of size and uh, I've not even had any of those today. <laughs> I think my maggots must have BO or something. I certainly don't seem interested in uh, in the maggots at the moment. But <clears throat> as you can see, the sun's setting. It's uh, it's around about seven o'clock now. Yeah, just before seven. So we've got two and a half, three hours of light left before it's properly dark. I think that's this is going to be our best time for the tench aside from the morning this is going to be definitely our, our best bet I think for, for the tench and if we do get a tench I'll still certainly get that that rod that we've got over there in that bay we'll get that back out in, in the spot if we've got some tench turned up we'll go full bore on the tench fishing I'm just hedging my bets a bit at the moment with the tench fishing being uh, I was going to say quiet <laughs> silent <laughs> It does look like the carp are still around here. Just did a couple of sloshes. Didn't see where it came from, but it's definitely in this little bay. Very tempted to keep a rod in here all night. It's wind is hacking right into this corner. sort of place that might kick up a surprise fish perhaps we should I might have a recast before it gets dark but uh, 
think perhaps, perhaps it might be an idea to keep keep a rod up here. So, well, as you can see, it's no distance at all. Just a few paces around the corner. There's clearly some fish still in there. As I say, you know, there's no reason to think they'll move out during the hours of darkness, really. They may do. But if we've got two rods out here anyway, I don't think we lose anything by leaving one up there. I do like margin spots. And it's a uh, pigeon at there. It's nice and quiet. There's a swim round here. Swim nine. Just over there. There's no one in it. So it's lovely and quiet up this corner. And the next swim along there is, is behind the tree over that way. Swim 10. I think that's the brown swim. There's no one along this side at all. Swim 7, swim 6, there's no one in it. Swim 5, there's no one in it. 4 to 1 down there, I don't know. But certainly we've got this, pretty much this half of the lake to ourselves. It's very quiet actually today. Something's just rolled out there. There's three swims along there. There's guy in the middle one but that's it I say it's nice and quiet it's tempting to put a bit of bait over there I think I might have one recast assuming it goes down nicely we'll have a recast as it starts to get dark we won't disturb it at the moment there's clearly some fish still in that bay I say we'll, we'll have a recast Perhaps about half nine, something like that, when we can still see. Well, I was still carp boshing about in that uh, in that bay, only a few, a few meters away from my bait. Or bait, I should say. Yeah, I think it's I think it's worth persevering tonight in there. <laughs> well guys, I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> it's uh, absolutely boshing out next to this bag. Definitely needs to be Keeping, keeping a rod down there. Well, I'm going to keep a rod down. I think that's made my mind up, really. It's, uh, it's about half eight now. 20 past eight. And uh, it's the only place I've seen any signs of any fish, so I'm definitely going to keep a rod down there. I'm just tying up some little solid bags to go out on the spots here. What I've decided to do, just quickly run you through it, put some reasonably light leads on, two and a half ounce leads, small pop up there which is just counteracted by that little bb shot on there and this is aimed at catching some tench during the night i'm going to make them into very small pva bags put them out on the spots out there for this evening these are these are white pop-ups actually they've had um soaking for a very long time in some goo they're uh, i think it's almond flavor And we'll put a PBA bag out with some um, Pacific tuna uh, bag mix in it. And we'll stick a little bit of tutti frutti into the bag as well. A little bit of tutti frutti goo into the bag. Certainly some fish showing out here, but way, way past where we're fishing. I don't think it's in my water anymore. I think it's in the swim tens water. But that's carp. We're after tench. We got a carp rod out over there where the carp are. <laughs> right over that rod. <laughs> I don't know, it hasn't gone. Right, that's the maggot rods refreshed 
probably for the last time this evening what I'm going to do is change these over from the maggot feeders to solid PVA bags just tied up a very small bag as you can see it's got a little tiny well as I showed you little tiny boily in there I'm going to put one of these on each of the spots I've been fishing marked by the tufties at the moment <laughs> there and there uh, so it's just come out again further out there and the reason for tying up these tiny bags is that I can cast them on these these uh, tench rods so I think that's going to be the plan certainly for now if these fish keep showing a long way out there I've seen now that going swim 10 is fishing well short of that so if we don't have much joy and now I can hear the fish in, in the dark boshing out there we may well get the break out the rest of the carp rods and perhaps have a cast with some solid bags a bit further out but that's the plan for now anyway we'll fish with these maggot rods just till it gets properly dark perhaps quarter to 10 10 o'clock somewhere around there and then we'll get these onto these two rods and I may well have a recast of this rod over here as well but uh, at the moment there's quite a lot of fish activity there's a carp boshing out in there at least one about every 10 or 15 minutes so a bit loath to disturb it at the moment but I've got a bag tied ready to go perhaps do that when it gets dark or just a, when there's just about enough light to see I'm less likely to disturb the fish then certainly still in this bay you can hear him hear him jumping out around there <laughs> flying here right that's one bag out does uh, certainly increases our chances of catching a carp I'm having bags out but I think it certainly increases our chances of catching something during the night anyway deep we've got a couple of depths covered there between those two rods oh just off that tree and it's gone down over the lovely donk as well well glad I did that Definitely feel a lot more confident <laughs> so not to fall in. Right, we recast. Yeah, please, I, please, I recast that rod. Went down with a lovely donk. It's nice and fresh. What I've done, rather than putting a uh, highly visible bait in there, I mean, it's, it's night time, but uh, rather than putting a little white or pink or yellow bait in the middle i've put something that looks exactly like the pellets uh, it's a little uh whittled down uh the krill boily sticky baits the krill it's a little uh, wafter actually i've put in there let's say i've trimmed it down just so there's that lovely mouthful of bait there on the bottom the fish been crashing out around this corner here further up the bay so I just took the chance to get that in but we're set now set now for the evening no more casting required 
can leave things to settle down. Hopefully we can have a nice big tench in the night or at first light and uh, I'll be semi surprised if that doesn't go at some point. As I say, we can we can let things settle now. Enjoy the uh, the dusk. Love this time of day. It's absolutely wonderful. Sunset. Sat next to a lovely lake. There's no one anywhere near me. <laughs> nice and peaceful. Nice and quiet. In fact, I think probably the nearest people to me are people on Hardwick uh, Smith because I can hear them over there occasionally. There's three chaps down here, two sharing a swim and one further along can't hear them at all they've been very quiet as I say as for this bank the road bank can't see anyone not seeing anyone spotting or anything right fingers crossed come on fishies so guys it's ten past ten the carp is still crashing uh, in this bay next to me uh, a bit further around the bay than where I've got that bag but they're still there which is a good sign um, we've got the two solid bags out on the tench rods here now as well so Fingers crossed, one or both of those will bust off during the night. So I'm going to sit up for probably another half an hour, I think, just to keep an eye on the water. I can just about see from the uh, what's left of the reflection of the remaining daylight on there. And uh, we'll just see if we can see anything. And fingers crossed, one of these rods will bust off during the hours of darkness. If they do, I'll see you then. If not, I will see you at first light. Well, good morning, guys. It's just gone five o'clock. I've been watching the water for about three quarters of an hour. There's the odd carp jumping out in the middle, but I've not really seen any tench rolling or anything. Relatively quiet night. We had we had one occurrence on that that rod in the bay over there uh, about two thirty. Had a few few beeps on it. I went around and checked it out and the rod tip was nodding I picked the rod up and sort of struck into it or lifted into it and I just felt a couple of thumps and then whatever it was, it was off I don't know if that was perhaps a tench a bit frustrating I think it's time to get these rods in I sort of left until now on these solid bags just to for that first light period just to see if we could uh, nick a bite but nothing's forthcoming so I think it's time to time to get them changed over back on the maggot feeders Ooh, it's a bit chilly put me hoodie on as well <laughs> Out so you can wake things up. Oh, hello. That'll be a take then. Blimey. me. I don't think this is a catch. <laughs> Blimey. Oh. If it is a tench, it's a heck of a tench. Unfortunately, my big landing net is in the, in the next swim. Oh, just round the corner. Oh, well, it's 
may well be a tent, it's sort of coming in again now. Eh? Sort of given up. Well, it is a tench. Does feel like a nice one. It is a tench. Awesome. God, what a scrap. Throw that away. What a scrap. What a run it went on. Wow. God, it's putting my arm off. It's a nice fish that is, that's why. No monster, but... Oh, it's certainly a good fish. Whew. Wow, that's certainly a good fish. As I say, no monster, but certainly a cracking fish. Well, they're here, they're here. Well, guys, there we are. That's what we came for, isn't it? Lovely manor farm tench, no monster, just about seven and a half pound, but uh, absolutely cracking fish. Wonderful stuff. And what a scrap as well. Absolutely fantastic. Right, we won't keep her out. We'll, uh, we'll get it returned. We'll get, uh, get that cart rod in and we'll, uh, we'll get the tench rods all out. Right, guys, let's get her back. Hopefully, as I say, she wasn't down there on her own and we can pick another one or two up gone just gone six o'clock so still time right let's get that carp rod in and uh, we'll get the, the third tent rod out well guys that is it curfew time is here we've winkled a tent out we lost the fish as well in the night and that was that was a shame it'd been nice to get that in but uh, a one one draw <laughs> we'll settle for that I think it's been it's been quite hard going I mean those the tents have been conspicuous by their absence I've not seen anything I've been up since first light I've seen I think one roll and I'm not even sure of that but there's been lots of carp boshing out but uh, at least we caught attention a lovely one at that seven and a half pounder certainly not going to complain about that now this is going to be my last session down here before the rivers open I am planning on doing a little bit more down here in the coming months certainly just to to for a bit of a change i do enjoy this i used to do this sort of thing a very very long time ago when i was in my late teens um and it does sort of take me back i do quite enjoy it 24 hours is enough for me though i have to say but uh, i do quite enjoy it it's nice to to catch some tench as well with the odd carp thrown in but as i say it was hard going today but you can't win them all can you we've had some good sessions down here so We'll take the rough with the smooth. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Tight lines, enjoy your own angling. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your wonderful support. And I'll see you all again very soon.